Good news coming in for SMEs. The Uganda Development Bank has put together 612 billion shillings, twice as much as it was last year, to help boost the SME sector at such a time when the economy is really struggling. Welcome to Money and Markets. I'm Shamim K. Matovo. Access to health services continues to be a great challenge to a common Ugandan, and especially when it comes to specialized services such as eye care. Tonight we speak to the experts to help us understand how you can navigate the challenges around this area and get the best service that you require. Specialized eye treatment in Uganda um, can get quite expensive uh, because you have to imagine, first of all, being able to access that cost is the transport cost that you incur to be able to access this cost. And then once you get to the facility where you're supposed to get the uh, specialized eye care treatment, then you have to pay a consultation fee. Um, and then uh, essentially now you have to pay whatever you know prescription or management for your eye problem has been prescribed. So for instance, when it comes to the optical industry, you can find glasses going for as high as 1 million Uganda shillings, which is very expensive and not everyone is able to cover that cost. First of all, the thing that is advised the most when it comes to families, um, and I'm talking about you know, uh, kids um, in, this, in this case, is that parents need to be very careful and very observant with their kids to start noticing if they have any eye care problems uh, from a very early age. Because when these problems are uh, you know, sort of diagnosed early, then it's possible to offer management that can be able to save that person's, uh, that child's eyes. So it's very, very uh, important for parents to listen to their kids whenever they complain about eyesight, whenever they say that they are not able to see on the blackboard when they're in class, or they have difficulties reading their notebooks and their textbooks. And then when that happens, the ideal thing is to take that child to an eye care professional to go through the eye test and to be able to get advice on the best way to take care of that child's eyes. But also in general, as a family, it's also advised um, that every single person gets their eye checkup at least once a year. Because then when this happens, uh, then the doctor or the eye care professional in this case is able to diagnose um, early enough and to be able to offer the management needed. The Ministry of Health estimates that in Uganda there's about 1.2 million people um, that are suffering from reduced vision. And there's actually about 250,000 people who are blind in both eyes. The situation is calling for action as soon as possible. Um, because the 250,000 people who are currently legally blind, it's possible that that situation could have been prevented early on, if it had been diagnosed early on. So uh, we as La Pair Group call upon every Ugandan to put eye care as a priority and to go for their yearly eye checkups with their eye doctor. As a country, if we do not uh, start putting eye care, making eye care a priority at the moment, then um, the statistics estimated by the Ministry of Health of the people affected by reduced vision and the statistics of blindness as well are going to keep increasing. It's going to get much, much harder to be able to carry out our daily activities. The very simple things that we're used to, waking up in the morning, making tea, preparing your kids to go to school, going to school, working and all that, is going to become quite difficult if we do not address the eye care problem that is affecting this country. It's also important to note that the World Health Organization estimates that by 2050, half of the world's population is going to be legally blind. So this is not something to wait for. It's something to start putting um, as a priority at the moment. Um, it's also important to note that the World Health Organization estimates that by the year 2050, half of the world's population is going to be suffering from myopia. Myopia in this case means short-sightedness, which means they won't be able to see things from far. Um, all this can be corrected and managed in advance if we go in for our yearly eye checkup. As La Pair Group, our contribution to mitigating these uh, statistics about eye care is that we offer affordability 
First of all, uh, when you walk into any of our LaPierre stores, you will be tested for free, so that minimizes the consultation cost that you have, would have in call, incurred elsewhere. And then um, our glasses are very affordable. So um, at the moment, for instance, we have about uh, six branches in Uganda, and we're actually planning on expanding to more regions of Uganda. Our goal, potentially, is that no one should ever have to go for more than 30 minutes without accessing the quality eye care that they need. Uh, in line with our goal to make eye care accessible to everyone in Uganda, uh, LAPEA has gotten into a partnership with the Uganda Muslim uh, Supreme Council to be able to screen the eyes in all of their mosques across Uganda. If you are affected uh, by, you know, you have any kind of eye problems, be it uh, you have problems seeing from far or you are affected by light or basically any eye problems that you may be experiencing. Follow us on our social media platforms because we will be announcing uh, everywhere we'll be going to conduct this vision test. And we also call upon other religious communities uh, to take advantage of this opportunity as well. It's possible for us to partner with them and arrange the eye care services uh, for their congregation as well. Agriculture is the backbone of Uganda's economy, but we know for sure that a lot of our farmers struggle to get their produce beyond the Ugandan border. Take for instance, Kenya rejected our maize because of its poor quality. So tonight we interrogate the warehouse receipt system in how it can help you organize your production and give you access to markets. Our renewed calls for the revitalization of the cooperative movement to increase agricultural output and benefits to farmers. To experts, helping farmers and those who have invested in the sector pull out of poverty and recover resources committed will require players to operate in organized groups. Availability of the product. The Grain Council, we have built all these warehouses. We need the product. Some of us have gone into production, most of us not. Where is the product to be traded? So we need organized production. We need the cooperative movement to be strong. We need some, we are ready to buy, but we cannot buy five bags in people's houses. Our trucks can buy from cooperatives and some community collection centers. The Grain Council is now working with the Uganda Warehouse Receipt Systems Authority to support the bulking and warehousing of selected agricultural commodities through farmer groups. We are working with the Grain Council, we are working with the millers to buy the grain. Millers, we are telling them, stop going to villages to look for grain, buy receipts from the Grain Council facilities. So that tripartite is what we are developing at the moment, so that we promote a section that is going to buy the grain to the big of takers. We have had an engagement with one of the big of takers in this market. The authority is a government institution that, among others, promotes grain collateral management and bulking, plus warehousing of selected agricultural products. Besides bulking, ensuring right quality output is one of the elements that the authority is promoting. Can maize, beans, soya bean, chia seed, sorghum, and all these commodities that uh, Richard mentioned be bought from licensed, certified warehouses so that even the few members of the warehouse receipt system authority the few staff of UNBS have where to start at so that enforcement starts from there and then we go upgrading it this is coming at a time when several agricultural sector stakeholders have raised concern about the informal operations especially in the grain sector which undermines quality and market access including to some of our neighbors who recently rejected our grain on quality grounds. Definitely there's need to have policies in place that yes, we are a food basket, but reporters of literally what goes out of here is not um, under specific regulation in terms of quality um, uh, and standards. And, and if we look at, just look at what has happened with our coffee, is a very good example. Our coffee prices and the farmers are thriving because you cannot export a bag of coffee out of this country without it going through some form of processing, without it being standardized. Why aren't we doing that for grain? 
These issues have emerged as the sector seeks to attract financing from major players, including International Finance Corporation, the World Bank's private sector lending arm, plus ensuring that the sector plows in more revenue than it has previously. <laughs>